Welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. I'm Emily with a bit of a scratchy throat because we have a whole bunch of smoke around here right now. Actually from forest fires in the US that are coming up north and filling our air with their smoke. So um, I have come to a place on Bowen Island, also known as Nachladochum, uh, which was logged about a hundred years ago and we're going on a quest today to find relics from that logging era uh, which I find fascinating but one thing I wanted to point out as we're here is that it's still a bit smoky I can definitely feel it in my chest um, but as we get deeper into the forest ironically and wonderfully the forest is not only a natural fire guard or fire break in some cases where it holds moisture or certain trees don't burn very well, but a diverse forest actually um, is resistant to fire in some ways. And when you get inside, it actually uh, keeps the smoke out. So it's sort of like a smoke guard for those of us and all the animals needing to breathe. So it's a wonderful place to be when it's too smoky out in the open. Let's go and explore and see what we can find, especially the re remains of a very old and decomposing steam donkey. So I brought some paper and pens to show you how a steam donkey works, at least basically. Uh, basically, a steam donkey is used to pull logs down the mountain or across a, a flat area, but quite often down the mountain and it's pretty much a big winch with a boiler um, on a stone boat or, or some kind of a large log platform um, attached to some trees. So let me show you. Basically you have, well, the log platform and on that, oops, a large boiler, which is pretty much a huge tank, my messy forest drawing here, and tank has, of course, steam coming out, and up here, a giant winch. Um, so basically, the boiler operates the winch, and the winch, you get a new color, operates a cable which goes up to a block on a spar tree, a block being a, a large pulley, right? And let me put that spar tree there. The spar tree is a tree that has had all its branches cut off and the top of it, but it's still very tall. Basically it acts as the fulcrum where the, well not fulcrum, but the place where the, where the uh, log will be pulled to. So that cable goes up there and down to the log and perhaps it started really far away. Let me give myself more space here. Maybe the log started over here. Oh, so many branches. Move branch. Okay, there's our giant 500 year old fir tree and it is attached by a choker. It's a big cable and the choker goes over this and the winch pulls it up and it just goes right across here and hopefully doesn't hit any people because remember the people are only about this tall. And uh, apparently many people lost their lives by being hit by logs being pulled by donkeys. But that is a steam donkey. And let's go find one. I wanted to point out this nice fur here. There are many furs this size around and uh, some cedars that are mostly a bit smaller, but um, it looks like such a nice big fur, right? I can reach maybe halfway around, maybe. Um, it's actually very young. This is one of the second growth firs. And the trees that were logged here originally, I don't even know how to measure. It would take many people to reach around them. They were so big. You could fit 10 of these trees in one of those easily. Um, 
And then what you have to imagine is they felled those trees on this mountainside. I mean, this is enormous. Those were so much more enormous, right? They felled those trees on this steep mountainside and they went crashing all the way down there. Sometimes hundreds of feet long, end over end over end. I mean, how can I demonstrate? Let's pretend this is 20 times the size it is. And it just went, oh, that didn't go very well. But <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean? It's, it was colossal, the work that they were doing. And I just wanted to point that out. This looks like a rather large tree. This is nothing like what there used to be standing all over this hillside and frankly, all over most of the island and most of BC and Washington, um, actually the whole coast. So um, yeah, just for some perspective, what we're looking at is not the way it used to be a hundred years ago, hundred plus. And here it is. Oh, a frog. Giant red-legged frog back here. Um, so I actually don't know what all the parts of this are, but it's so fascinating to look at with these giant, like inch or more wide rivets, pointy rivets and all these things, which I expect um, were used to strap it down to the, um, to the stone boat or the platform that it was on those I mean, they have a big hole in them, so it seems like that would be a strap. They have these, it has these things on the bottom, probably used to bolt it down or maybe to bolt the top on. I'm not even sure what the top or bottom is here. Um, there are some grates over here. I don't know what part those were, but all interesting. And of course there's that whole um, grate, I guess, on the top there or bottom. And, uh, and then there's the inside, of course on the other side. So yeah, this is the boiler. A lot of the donkeys we find are beside creeks and this is the reason. It's a steam donkey, right? They need water to make the steam. Um, and yeah, so that's why you'll find them next to creeks. Hence why I found a gigantic red-legged frog as I walked up to this one because it's literally sitting in actually kind of a, a side creek off of Eddy Creek that runs down that way. I believe Eddy Creek is uh, named after Eddy Holdings, which might be one of the companies that, no, they didn't log this. I think they developed this part of the island anyway. So yes, water availability was super, super important for steam donkeys. Wood obviously to run the boiler, that was easy to find. Maybe some of them used coal, I don't know. But uh, you'd think in logging operations, they do as wood, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, makes me wonder how many fires were started from donkey operations. It's just me in a boiler. So you know that song, Donkey Riding, which I think most British Columbians or people who grew up here anyway would have learned in school, maybe even more people across Canada. Um, I know a lot of people who think it's about like the animal donkey. It's not. It's about steam donkeys. And I'm going to, like it or not, sing you the verse that is about, that, that proves my point. Um, one of the verses goes, were you ever off the horn where it's always safe and warm there's a lion and a unicorn riding on a donkey so this i believe is the horn the the boiler that like in my picture stands up tall um it's possible the horn is some part of the winch that stands up tall on the other end i'm not 100 percent sure but the thing is you know how the steam donkey, so the boiler would be standing up. It's got the fire and the steam going inside it. It's pulling the winch along. They use that, yes, to pull the trees along, but they also use it with the winch and the cable to pull the donkey along. So the, the boiler and everything is bolted down to the deck and, um, and basically they hook the winch up to some spar tree or something somewhere and it drags itself through the forest. Um, with that cable. Um, 
so I guess the workers, when they were moving the operation through the forest, would ride the donkey. They would sit on the, the deck, the platform that the, the boiler and winch and everything were on and go for a ride. And I'm sure that was also very dangerous. But in that verse, so off the horn is right off either the boiler or the winch, whichever standing up part at the front, uh, where it's always safe and warm because the boiler is warm, of course, or possibly very hot, I guess. And uh, there's a lion and a unicorn. You know the crest, like on BC Ferries, crests have two animals? Well, I can't remember the name of the company right now that made many of the donkeys in Canada, but its crest was a lion and a unicorn. So they were riding the donkey with you because the crest was right on the front of the donkey, obviously for promotional branding reasons. Um, yeah, so that song, Donkey riding, donkey riding, hey ho and away we go, riding on a donkey, is about this. Just so you know. I know where some more parts are. Here um, is what I think is the top of the boiler. If you remember on the picture I drew, kind of the boiler comes up and then it went in and had the little chimney. So I think that's this and it's so rusty. Ugh, I don't want to cut myself, so I'm not going to move it around too much, but this looks like it. And there's some sort of a very rusty ring there behind it. All along this creek and in fact in many forests all over our province you can find these trees that have springboard notches in them. And uh, I know I've talked about this in another video but I'm doing it again. So basically um, these are in various kinds of trees but mostly in cedar trees and the reason is cedars, well here's a young cedar, you can see it kind of buttresses out at the bottom. and uh, that means it gets wider, right? Like a, like those old churches had buttresses that helped them stay stable as they built them so very tall. Well, if you go up a couple meters because of these wide buttresses, and I think this tree was probably much wider than it looks right now, um, you know, because it's rotted away over a hundred years, um, it would have been much narrower at this level than at this level. Um, and that one back there, in fact, across the creek. I'm guessing that thing is now at least six feet across diameter. The, the stump, not the little tree that's growing on top of it, right? But the stump. And at the time, maybe it would have been eight feet in diameter. That wasn't terribly uncommon in this forest. So what they did was they took a plank or, or you know, some sort of a board and they, well, they dug these notches, cut these notches into the tree. Now remember, if the tree was much thicker, the notch was much deeper, right? And then they had their planks sticking out. I'll put another one in here. It's hard to make them stay when it's so rotted away, but at the time they would have cut this notch the right size for holding a plank, right? Well, I'll have to hold this one. So then they have these much larger planks, not little sticks, right? upon which they would stand, and then they could cut that much higher. In fact, they may, it looks like this might have even been one here, so perhaps they cut it as steps and had stick in there. There we go. Um, and, and would have progressively higher planks to stand on so that they could cut the tree at a place it was much narrower, which made the job so much easier. And of course, at the time they had, well, various saws, but some of which were those, those massive two-man saws, you know, they had a handle on each end so that you'd have one guy standing on one side of the tree and another guy with more um, springboards on the other side and ripping back and forth on that saw to cut it down before then using the donkey to drag the log off down the hill to the ocean where they would cart them away on log booms. I have no idea what kind of notch this is. It's hardly a notch. Maybe they started cutting and changed their minds. And there's some kind of a pipe in here. I mean, it must have been a 
some sort of spike they drove in. I don't even know, but it's clearly buried deeply in there. And it is hollow and metal. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. It's huge. However, look at that log. I mean, it's not as big as they come, but just to give you some sort of idea of the scale of the trees they were cutting here, I think this was a normal sized tree to be cutting and probably has um, become smaller through rotting and crumbling over the years. So here is the block, which I will be very careful about because it's rusty metal. And that worries me a bit, but you can see on the back, here's the turning part that the cable would go around and some sort of a pin that's completely rusted in place at the top here. I mean, the whole thing's rusted together as one. And here, I think, would have been the hook that I'm assuming went through here with a pin of some type to hook it onto the top of the tree. So cool. So cool, you can imagine this is, um, I don't know, 50 feet or more? Maybe 70 feet? I'm guessing, I can't even see where the steam donkey boiler is, but somewhere down there. So I'm assuming this is here because the spar tree they used the last time they used that donkey before abandoning it um, is here somewhere. God knows. I mean, I suppose they limbed it and it was just a tree. So either they cut it down and took it with them at the end too, or um, it rotted away because it wasn't living after all. So in the forest, we can find so much amazing evidence of, frankly, the amazing technology that we have used to cut down the forests over, well, thousands of years, people have been doing this. and the modern equipment people use for logging is is even more amazing than the steam donkeys and such things of a hundred years ago and i just want to say my father was a forester i do have an appreciation for the forestry industry in our province however i believe it needs to change and this is why this is a second growth forest it is a hundred years old and it will be hundreds of more years before it's anything like the forest that was cut down before it. And right now it's doing its best to protect me from the smoke that's coming in from the burning forests. So in all ways, we need to be protecting our forests. We need to be finding ways of building and of reusing materials, reusing homes, maintaining a sustainable way of living that doesn't require us to cut down ever more timber. You know, by the time Europeans came here and started logging here, mostly for, for boat building materials um, in the beginning, they had already depleted the forests of Europe. That's us. That's not they, it's we. And while I personally have benefited my childhood, <laughs> I was raised by a forester. Um, I helped color in the, the maps, um, uh, you know, that they, that they used for various cut blocks and things like that. And, and my father was trying actually to develop more sustainable logging practices and to work on the sustainable side of the industry. But it hasn't, it hasn't changed enough. And, and in order for the industry to change, we need to change. We need to change how we consume wood, how we consume uh, and everything. But I think one of the most important things is for all of us to get out in our forests. Sure, look for logging relics, look for those old uh, springboard notches in stumps and nurse logs with new trees growing on them and all this stuff, some of which is from our resource industry. Um, but that we learn to appreciate how important the current forest is to our well-being because we need it. We need it to breathe, quite literally in the smoke, but also as it replenishes the oxygen in our air and stops the fires and is a home for not only animals, but all kinds of species that make up the community we live in. That is my little lecture for today. I do 
really, really love the forest. I hope you do too. Happy exploring.